It's a funny beginning because my parents were interested in never been in a gallery at all. So they never took me to an art gallery. Um, so the first experience was when I was younger, I went to the Louvre on a trip with the school. Um, and I remember going in with the class and thinking, where, where is this place? It's full of pictures, I've never seen a place like it before. And there was this big massive painting on the wall. I thought, oh my God. So I walked up to it and then I thought, I remember thinking, how do they do this? And I, I tried to peel a bit off the corner and the guard came jumping out, <laughs> screaming and shouting at her. And I suppose for that point, I've, I've always thought, how did they do that? And that that's curiosity, it's just like built. And that's basically what my work's built on, really. It's, it's working, I don't paint sort of with a brush, I sort of build up in layers and textures and use my hands as much as I do anything else and just surfaces and a lot of the interesting things like that. It's quite abstract in that way, but also quite figurative as well. Because I, I've always been interested in Victorian art and that's what first got me influenced into painting as much as anything. Um, I suppose originally I was looking at people like um, Rembrandt and Egon Schiel, Degas, people like that. Um, and then picking elements of their work that really drew me, so the line work of Egon Schiele, so I tried to incorporate things like that in my drawing, maybe the colour of Degas, so I tried to incorporate something that not sort of 100% but just elements of it. Well, I actually realised I wanted to do art. My father was totally dead against it, obviously, because he was a northern butcher. Um, so I ended up working in the abattoir for 15 years in Manchester, which was soul destroying, to say the least. But while I was in there, I thought, oh, what else can I do? So um, I knew I could draw to some degree, and I thought, well, I'll keep at it. I thought if, if I keep at it, it doesn't, this place doesn't knock it out of me, nothing will. So I carried on for all the time, going to life classes every week. Um, and eventually, um, when the business went, uh, I got a job working in the school as a technician and I had a portfolio together then, life studies that I've been doing. <clears throat> so I went to the galleries in London, took my portfolio down, just walked in the galleries. Got to on the doors and said, would you like to have a look? And most of them, oh, no, not at all, I've got wrong. So, I, but I got some good feedback, so it was interesting. So that's what I was looking for more than anything. So then I carried on as well. So I think that, that helped more than maybe going to university and doing a great degree or something, because it gives you a, a, an idea of you, where you are. You know you know where the bottom is. You know you don't want to go back there. And, uh, and, I found that one out, so um, it was really uh, part. It was, I suppose, what it's what drives you as well. The models are professional models, anyway. They're not anybody I know personally. Um, I quite like that distance because if you do somebody you know personal, it has a different feel. Um, I think to an observation. I'm, I'm sort of. The elements of the picture, if you know what I mean, the figure is as much an element as the landscape that I'm trying to put into it. So it's not a personal um, painting as such, it's more a, an element of design. The paintings I've been doing recently, it's, the figure is more of a metaphor for our human being basically. So it doesn't have to be a particular person, it's a human figure in a landscape setting which is not quite right or it's undercurrents of of something and that's what I'm quite interested in. I'm quite interested in things like fashion photography which has you know gives a gloss image but there's undercurrents of you know age old artistic um, themes I suppose it's sex, sex death and addiction isn't it? Yeah. So it's basically those elements that permeate through through uh, my work and as well as you know, images that I see as well. So, like I say, the, the models are really just elements for for the work. I mean, I could be drawing a still life. It's it's not anything other than than that. It's it's a, it's a starting point to to develop a, a way of working. 
the big oils are what I'm really aiming at, and I'm getting quite a lot of interest from people who are. Mm -hmm. it's, it sort of changes the way you, you work as well because you're working on a big, it's more of a, I don't know, it's more of a, it takes it into another sort of dimension. You can, you know, you can envelop yourself into a big work. Because I used to like um, people like Matt Rothko. Um, I used to just love the way you could walk up to it and it just, mm -hmm painting sort of swamps you. So, um, yeah. I'm bringing in elements of landscape into the backgrounds. Um, I've been struggling trying to not make things too literal. So I'm bringing elements of say landscape. But it's just putting the figure in, in an environment where it's maybe slightly out of place but also wrapped up into it as well. So I've always liked figure to that. And, um, even when I was at college and they wouldn't let me do figurative art, so I didn't stay. Um, it, I always thought that was what I was drawn to, you know. When, when I went to galleries, like I said, the Louvre and stuff, and these great massive figures, you know, they're just fantastic. So.